what it's, today's message is all about. And it's a month ago because it's Communion Sunday. Pastor always takes this from Jesus' presence because it has the bread and the cup on it when we have Communion Sunday. The meal that heals. Ooh, Jesus' body broken for us. The stripes laid upon it. It purchased our healing. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He paid the price for our healing. He shed His blood for our righteousness. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things become new. And it's the blood that did that. The life is in the blood. The new blood. The new life is in the blood. Jesus' blood. New life. That new life is coursing through our veins. Come on, somebody. But when she said, and, and Danielle used to say, this is a thing for our month. And she, she looked on here she said, it's June. I said, no. I said, I asked Pastor to put that in there. And I said, no, it's okay. You don't have to. But you think, see, you wonder sometimes when you go to preaching and teaching and ministering and things, are you really hearing from God? And then Pastor... I said, ah, oh, you don't have to put it in there. I said, I've got it. I can bring my devotional and I can look at it. But if you look at it here, it's uh, Psalms 91.4. It's also known as the Soldier's Psalm. It says, He will cover you with His feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Didn't we just look at the Star Spangled Banner? Over the ramparts we watched. A rampart and a ramp they built up with a wall. And they put a parapet wall on it. They built a wall on this ramp. And God is our protector. Amen. We can look over. The battle's in soon. But we're going to get to the 91st Psalm here in a moment. So yeah, the Star Spangled Banner and that Psalm, they went together. God knew what He was doing when He put this on my heart. And I really didn't think about the Star Spangled Banner before because, and I do declare the 91st Psalm over each and every one of you every day over this body, the church, our believers of the nation, law enforcement, first responders, border patrol agents, everybody. And Raymond was talking about soldiers the other day. We're raising soldiers, and there's, there's disciplines. We're all in the army of God, aren't we? Amen. So we need to follow disciplines that He has given to us. And I'm going to read this little bit out of uh, Brother Copeland's daily devotional from June 29th. I've only been reading this one for 19 years. It's good to tell. It is Divine Healing Sunday. 
And the thief comes except for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Doesn't it? And as good soldiers, we have to take care of one another and ourselves and our families and everything that the Lord has given us. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 119. A healthy body, enough money to pay all your bills, and extra to invest in the work of the gospel, a godly marriage, and happy, healthy children, peace of mind. God has prepared a banquet full of blessings for you. Amen. But those blessings are not just going to fall on your lap. Really? You must be willing, as well as obedient, if you're going to eat the best from God's table. So be willing. Don't be willing for Satan to put sickness on your body. Be willing instead to be well in the honor of Jesus Christ's sacrifice at Calvary. Refuse to accept anything less than divine healing. Refuse. Satan, this is God's property. Get your hands off it. Am I awful loud? Am I echoing a lot back here? No? Okay. Don't be willing to live in lack, but be willing instead to live in the divine prosperity and abundance. Refuse to allow Satan to stop the flow of God's financial blessings to you. Be willing to receive God's best plan for your marriage and your children. Don't settle for the norms of the world. Live above them in a home full of love and harmony, a home that is what God meant it to be. Don't allow Satan to substitute anxiety and altars for the peace and undisturbedness that Jesus bought for you. Be willing and obedient to cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. You refuse to be robbed of the banquet of blessings that has belonged to you since you became a believer. Be willing to eat the good of the land. Amen. If you want to stand with me one more time for the honor of the author of this book, we're going to uh, Psalm 91. My goodness. Are you ready? Yeah. I hear pages turning. I see some still turning. There we go. Sister Shirley's got it. Ah, oh, she's close. There we are. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you may seek refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day of the pestilence that stops in the darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come nigh you. Amen. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord. Your refuge. 
refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And they are bearing you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. My goodness. And this is this is my favorite part right here. 14 to 16. This is God's promise to me, to you. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, take me, use me as you will. Let me be a mouthpiece that brings glory to you, edifies your people, yes, that they shall be blessed for coming by coming in, yes, Lord. and they shall be a blessing as they go out yes, to do your bidding. Yes, Lord. Because the harvest is ripe, and the laborers are few, and we need your protection, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Well, we're, we're, we were singing the one song too. I, I made a little note here. I need to to look at it. See, I'm always off script. I don't know why. I just do it. But it says, "Fire and wind, come and do it again." But do you remember when Elijah was in the cave fleeing from Jezebel? And there was a great fire and a great wind. But the Lord wasn't in it. He was in that still, small voice. Amen? You may be seated. Shame off me. I forget that on occasion. And most of these people know me. <laughs> but he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You know, there's three people in this conversation, in this prayer right here in this word there's us there's Jesus and there's God God speaking 14 through 16 Jesus is speaking 3 through 15 and we've got to get our word in he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place. This is where we tabernacle. It's our shelter. It's where we reside. Where we live. And you've got to be pretty close to somebody to get in their shadow. But whose shadow are we in? The God of more than enough. El Shaddai. That can meet every need we have. 
The spirit of the law of life that we have in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death, which is spiritual death, poverty and sickness. That's all there is to the law. Right there. And we're speaking here, and I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Yes. But James 4, 6, and 7 says, Draw nigh, nigh to God, and He'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. I'm sure most of you have some health care insurance, don't you? And don't they send you these uh, knowing notes on your phone, you know, preventative care? Have you, have you ever heard the idiom, an ounce of prevention? It's worth a pound of cure. Mm -hmm. See, these, these things that we do can prevent. This is preventive health care. Yeah. And we're soldiers. We have to take care of you, ourselves, one another. We have to be disciplined. We're a body. Yes. Yes. Preventive health care. An ounce of prevention. That's the name of this message. But we have to be prepared. In season and out of season. To share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of what God has given to us with others. Because didn't Jesus tell that? Us that in Matthew 10. He says freely you have received. Freely give. Preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the leper. That's our marching orders. But if we're not sound of body and mind, we're not much of a battling unit, are we? So we have, we have our part to play in this. And it takes meditation and dedication Amen. to do this. Yes. To stay here is like all of y'all that went out yesterday. You guys went out into the harvest. What a wonderful thing. And now the harvest will start coming in Amen. next week. Amen. To hear the good news of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But you had to be a soldier to go out there and march in that heat yesterday. Amen. The weather's not always good. Amen. How do you know? Do, does any of you others uh, get uh, these promptings on your phone? Excessive, excessive heat watch. Yes. Yeah. No? Yes. I get it. Yes. Multiple times a day. In my route where I'm driving my truck, I'm in. I'm in Roseland, Mojave, and Tashkey going in this loop like this. And I'm, and I'm thinking, why do they keep sending me things, these things? We're in the Mojave Desert. It's summertime. It's hot. But the prince of the power of the air, don't you think he's trying to distract you by telling you it's hot? Every time your phone, boom, so you look. Excessive heat warning. Yeah. He's always trying to distract you from your mission. And what our mission is, is to draw close to God and to draw others with us to Him so that they can eat the good of the land. The promise, the land of God's promises. Amen? And shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty.
John uh, 14 and 15, they say uh, quite a bit about this. Uh, Mark 14, 21, he says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and we will love him and come and make our abode with him. The greater ones. We're the one with the power, not Satan. He's a defeated foe. But he's still, he's out there. And he's trying to get us. Constant barrage. Just like it spoke about in the battle hymns of the Republic there. The rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, they're coming at us all the time. So we need to be close to God in this place of protection. And Jesus said in 15, 7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you may bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. If we're not abiding with Him, we're not going to bear any fruit. He's the vine. We're the branches. We can't produce without being in the vine. Amen. And Daniel was talking about a little, a little bit earlier. He is our deliverer. Verse 3, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Noisome pestilence. King James says, this is a new King James, deadly. Deadly things that want to kill you. And Satan's always trying to do that because that's his method of operation is to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's always trying to set something up, a snare to trip us up, catch us, entangle us. He, bombard, he tries to bombard our mind where we get snared in our mind and he gets us distracted over here then he gets us over here because then he pulls these sicknesses and disease he's anxiety depression stress all the things that are and it's in our mind that he gets us but surely you can't get much stronger than that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. In verse 4, that's where we started off at. And I, when I'm declaring it every day, I use three translations. He says, and the way I say it is, I use the New American Standard, the King James, and the New Living Translation. I said, surely he shall cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. The pinions. The pinion is the uttermost joint on the all you hot wing lovers. <laughs> you got any hot wing lovers in here? Right. Yeah, okay. It shows more hands. That's all right. The first one looks like a little drumstick, and then that, and then that least one out there, that's the pinion. And Jesus talks about that in Luke 13, 34. He says, oh, you've killed your prophets. 
You have turned against me. How I wish to draw you near me as a hen covers her chicks with his wings. That's a shadow right there. Covered in that shadow, that secret place. Yes. And I know this is a little slow moving. But he shall cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you shall see refuge. Depicting the Ark of the Covenant with the cherubs sitting there and the wings over it. That's where God is enthroned on the mercy seat. That is the throne room of God. Then he tells us in Hebrews 4.16 Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and receive grace to help in your times of need. That His faithful promises are our armor and our protection. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, As many as are His promises in Him, they are yes, and through Him, the amen. 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 And through Him, those who are in Christ. And if we're in His army, we're in Christ. Amen. Amen. Here I am. Fell open to it. And Raymond, when he when he was preaching last week, and he was talking about the fruit of the spirit, love and self control, was at the end. But in Second Peter, chapter one, verse two, I'm going to read a few verses here. Grace and peace be multiplied, verse 2, be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. The God of more than enough. Multiplied. It pays to be in God's kingdom. The God of more than enough, the Almighty, more than enough, grace and peace be multiplied to you. By the God increase, Jehovah. As this divine power has been given to us all, things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue by which He has given to us these exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption of the world that is in the world through lust but also for this very re reason giving all diligence add to your faith virtue to virtue knowledge to knowledge self-control and self-control perseverance to perseverance godliness to godliness brotherly kindness brotherly love kindness to love for if these things are yours and abound you will neither be bearing nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ that's a pretty good promises right there isn't it Yes. Grab multiplied to it. Grace and peace. And that mercy. We go to the throne of grace. 
to obtain that mercy. That's for our past. Grace is that's now and present. Our sins are forgiven. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. Then we go on to verse 5. He says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Do any of you ever have any trouble going to sleep at night? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. What? What does he tell us in the armor of God? Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So don't be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day. We hold up our shield of faith, which is able to quench every fiery arrow of the wicked one. With the terror by night, Satan wants to give you nightmares and stuff like that. Psalms 4.8 says, I shall both lie down in peace and sleep and you alone will keep me safe. That's a pretty good promise right there. Amen. So roll that hair over at night. Because we're talking about preventive health care. You know, they tell us to eat right, get enough sleep, exercise. And if we're worn out, tuckered out from no sleep, then we're getting anxious, stressed out. He's trying, Satan is trying to kill us. Amen. But it's all, but it's all comes by dwelling in this secret place of the Most High. Because he goes on through a litany of these, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noon. The destruction that lays waste at noon. 1 John 3 8 says, And Jesus came for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. And we got the blood. We need to use that blood. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You're defeated by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah, we need to use these promises. The tools, as Les likes to call it. Yeah. That are in our toolbox. And a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. Did anybody in this church pass away of COVID? No. That was a plague. That was a pestilence. Well, Israel was used to it. Pestilence and disease that came in like that. The locusts came in, devoured their crops. Yeah. But doesn't he tell us in Malachi? He says, I'll rebuke the devourer from your sake, and your fruit shall not fall to the ground. Yeah. Some more of those good and faithful promises. Exceedingly great and precious promises. I love that right there. I like to shout that all the time. But we do come under attack. Yes, yes. I'm not denying it. I'm telling you. Well, I did. I did two June weddings. I, I was telling Eunice earlier. But I married a, one of our drivers in the yard the other day at work.
because I wanted him and his fiance, I wanted them to get it right. I've seen some of her posts on Facebook and things, and she's got some Jesus in her, and he's been getting preached at by Tim and myself for about 14 years, and he's kind of a slow learner. <laughs> But this morning that I'm going to do that, I, I wake up and I got a belly ache. And I mean a big belly ache. I mean like an old college horse. I am kicking at my belly. I mean, I am just, Lord of mercy. So I take on, I'm headed for work. And I'm going down. I leave the house and I'm headed down 90th. And the wind's kind of blowing. My car's going to the right. And I'm trying to look at my phone. I'm looking at the trees and it's, boy, it doesn't look like it's blowing this hard. And pretty soon, I got a flat. Well, I'm getting out of my car to look for the spare. I know where the spare is, but to get to it, that's another thing. About that time, my son calls me. He says, where are you, Dad? He said, well, I'm pulled over on the side of the road here. I got a flat tire. I said, I'm on A and 90th. He said, you were driving on a flat tire when you left the house. <laughs> well, there must have been a little bit of tear air in it. But going down the, the road in the dirt, it left some rim marks. But there's, there's enough there to get me day and ninetieth anyway, <laughs> and, and blow out. And so I've got my hands stuck down there, and I feel the spare. And so this, well, my spare is flat. I've never had another car, and I don't think the tires companies they check that stuff for you all the time when you get things done, unless you call it to their attention. And he says, well. Get it out of, the, out of your car and throw it beside the car. And I called another guy from work. I said, where are you at? He, he's on his way from town. I said, come down to and 90 if you get me. So I'm throwing my spare tire out. My grandson comes and gets it. You know, the, the weapon formed, but it didn't prosper. We still got those people married on, on Wednesday night. I got to work. Then he tells us, Satan was trying not to let this stuff happen. <laughs> to get this couple married. And they were going to go to Vegas. And I said, you don't have to do that, Robert. I said, I'll do it. And so when I started the ceremony, I said, this is, uh, this ain't Vegas. And I ain't Elvis. But we do have the same birthday. <laughs> <laughs> January 8th, me and Elvis share the same birthday. Anyway, we better move along here a little bit. Back to the 8th verse. And only with your eyes shall you look on and see the recompense of the wicked. John watched the presidential debate the other night. I felt empathy for Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. This is, his father is the devil. And he's, and he's reaping what he's sown. But First Timothy exhorts us, this, we need to do this. We need to pray for all men kings and all who are in authority that Christians everywhere may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is a desire of God that no man should perish but all should come to the knowledge of the truth and I pray that for him for that man every day Governor Newsom, Kamala Harris, Speaker Pelosi. God loves each one of them. 
Just as much as He loves us. He don't like what they're doing. But we see that. We only look on with our eyes. He's, we're seeing the rewards of all of His dirty dealings and things like that. And I, there's pe you see people getting gleeful about it and stuff. You know, by the grace of God, that's not one of us. You know, thank God that He sent His Son and delivered us all. Praise God. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor any plague come nigh your dwelling. That's a promise of divine protection and help. Because we have made the Most High. Because we've drawn nearer to Him. Yeah. Stand. See, this are, these are the conditions for us to really reap the full benefits of what He has purchased for us. And then we go on to 11. He says, He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. Amen. Now Satan will try to get you. He tried to get Jesus right here with, these very with this very verse. And this is what Satan said to Jesus. He says, for he shall give his angels charge over you. He didn't use the rest of it. But he tries to get us to act irresponsible. To keep us. Angels are ministering spirits for the heirs of salvation according to Hebrews 1.14. We used to have a healing service here six or seven years ago every Friday. And I was at the whole weedery one day. And I, I come out and I see there's two cars, they got identical bumper stickers on it. And it's all about Jesus and it's all good and stuff. And this fellow walks up and then I, I go to talking to him. Invited him to come to divine healing service. He says, "Well, and he was a young Baptist preacher." And I, I just, I don't forget it because I remember. Him. I really knew who he was. We only used the King James. That's fine. But he was down on the corner of the mall all the time with speakers. I mean, a bunch of them hollering and carrying on. And he tells me, well, divine healing passed away. That passed away. I said, well, no, it didn't. He said, those, Jesus told us, those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they shall handle snakes, and if they drink anything poisonous, they shall not harm them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He says, okay. I'll go get a cup of bleach. And come over here. I'll bring it over to you here and you drink it. I said, well, no. I'm not going to do that. I responded the same way Jesus did in Matthew 4, 7. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Amen. Yeah. Right. 
And then he says, yeah, and they'll bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thank oh God for them angels on a pretty regular basis. I get it. I've been up in some pretty treacherous situations and stuff like that. And I know that my trucks and stuff that I was in spots, they weren't defying gravity. <laughs> I know I know there are some helping hands bearing me up in these spots. Hallelujah. Thank God for those angels. Yeah. He, he gave us these too. He says, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent you shall trample down. Yeah. 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 Hebrews 1, or excuse me, Ephesians 1, 16. See, he... that you would know the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe, according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities, power, might, and dominion. And then Ephesians 2, 6 says, And He has raised us up, with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places. Yeah. Where are we at? It's a friend that we're in the throne room. We look right over to our intercession. Our guy who's interceding on our behalf. If our words, we hear our words that we're saying right there, right next to him, making intercession on our behalf. So our prayers were paid, praying. Far above all principalities, Amen. powers, might, and dominion. That's where we've been raised up to. The devil is under our feet and that sickness is from him. Sickness, disease, lack, poverty, all of it. Amen. And this, this, is a, this is my favorite part of it of it all. Because He's loved me, because He set His love upon me, therefore I will deliver Him. I will set Him securely on high because He has known my name. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a high tower. The righteous run in and are made safe. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Yes. Thank you. If we're in that secret place, we're right with him. Mm -hmm. He hears us. Amen. We don't have to scream. We don't have to holler. Hallelujah. We're right there. He's right next to us. He can, he's, he's close enough to cast his shadow on us. He can hear us. Yes. I will be with him in trouble. Any of y'all ever get in any trouble? <laughs> Flat tires. Yeah. Wondering where the jack is. Yeah. Thank God for my son. He says, I'll pick up the tire after work. He said, I'll meet you after the wedding on A and 90. <laughs> we'll jack your car up and get you home. <laughs> He's with me in that trouble. He took care of it. Because He loves me. Yeah. He loves you. Oh, yeah. He does those things for us. Because He loves us. Doesn't He? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And with a long love, Amen. I will satisfy Him. Yes. He wouldn't satisfy us give us a long life to live all beat up, busted, disgusted, broken, ailing and hurting. He's made provision for us in all these things. And show Him my salvation. 
And we don't think often enough about that word salvation includes health, healing, prosperity, soundness, wholeness. Amen. So I guess I've done about I've done 16 verses. I guess I'm uh, I'm done now. So if you want to if anybody like hand played on them for any reason, come up afterwards. But I'm going to pray us out of here right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for the help of your Holy Spirit today. Lord, we want to thank you for creating a brother Tim a clean heart and a steadfast spirit within him. We thank you, Lord, that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead right now is quickening Tim's mortal body. Divine health and healing, a supernatural recovery for Tim right now as he and his, and his time of recovery. A recovery. Lord, strengthen Sharon. Give her, her body strength to go through what she will do as a caretaker, which will, there will be some follow-up to this, but give her strength in her and the whole family. And Lord, we thank you for letting us come into your house. We thank you, Lord, that you dwell in us, around us, among us, and you are close to us, and we'll draw close to you, and that you will be our tower of strength in all circumstances. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.